So to continue on from what we did yesterday, we're looking at using trig to find missing pieces. We're going to pretend these look like half circles, which they sort of do. This circle here has a radius of 2 inches, and this circle here has a radius of 8 inches. Um, I want to know what is this distance x and I want to know the area. It's actually very similar to a problem we did yesterday. You guys tell me where you think I should start. Yeah, we need to find right angles. Okay, where are we going to start the big one? We're going to We're drawing the radius to the tangent. That makes a right angle. And while we're at it, we'll do it in the little one, the smaller one too. Yeah, so we're dealing with circles. That's usually one of the first things we look for is if there is a tangent. So we draw a radius to that tangent to find right angles. However, this doesn't form a triangle right now. What can we do to make this form a triangle? Though? Very common trick. We have two lines that are perpendicular to the same line, so we know they're parallel. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily in half, but cut a rectangle out of it. So this is a—it's basically what we call a right trapezoid. Create a right triangle out of that. We just cut the rectangle portion off of it. It's going to be similar. To have, sim, similar having a trapezoid like this. Cut it off here, you've got a right triangle. Right? Now let's look at that right triangle. Oh, here. Well, that's a right angle. What else do we know about it? This is 2.5 inches. One other piece that we find rather quickly that piece. <clears throat> Radius of the point eight minus the Track the radius, the radius. 1.2 minus 0 0.8, 0 0.4 inches. Now it really doesn't matter which angle I find. I'm going to try to find this one over here. According to that angle, the 0.4 is which side? Opposite. And the 2.5 is the? I five. So that's going to be a sign. Sine of the theta, of theta equals opposite of hypotenuse. Now we don't know the angle. We do know the opposite side is 0.4, and the hypotenuse is 2.5. How do I solve this for the angle?
10.21. Of course, that means this angle over here, 80.79 degrees. Because the triangle has to add up to 180. How do I find x? Perfect. Just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're working in reverse. b squared minus b squared. 0.5 squared minus 0.4 squared. Get 2.468. That's x. Area. Got four distinct areas to find. Label the first one, that rectangle, how do I find that area? Perfect, point eight, point four six eight. Doing this one point nine seven four four. Two is that triangle. How do I find that area? Perfect. 2.468 times 0.4 divided by 2. 3 and 4 are those sectors of the circles. Their angles are related. This angle right here is going to be 90 degrees plus this angle, or 180 degrees minus this one, if you want to look at it. 180 degrees minus 80.79, 99.21 degrees. Over here, it's going to be 180 minus 90 minus the 9.21. Takes that angle. There's part three. How am I going to find the area for piece three? It starts with pi. Pi times radius squared times our angle of 99.21 over 360. So the pi times 1.2 squared, that's the area of the whole circle. And the 99.21 over 360 is the ratio of the circle that we have. So 1.2461. How about piece four? So again, pi times 0.8 squared is the area of the whole circle times the 80 point. 
seven nine divided by three sixty is the ratio of the circle. Right, four five one zero. Four point one six five one. Big. Not bad. Let's try something a little different. So here we have a circle. <laughs> Tangents coming off and intersecting. Good cat mesh. Cat mesh. In the background, you just gotta double check to make sure your microphone is muted if you're not trying to talk. Thank you. So anyway, um, we're looking to find the area of this. Now this is kind of similar to the one we did yesterday where it was two circles. But here, instead of the second circle, we come to a point, which actually simplifies the problem quite a bit. You guys tell me, where do I start? I don't necessarily want the area of the whole circle because part of it's going to have to be included in other things. But whenever I have a circle, that's well, the first place I look to, to put in a right angle. Tangent. Put in those right angles. Now, remember, whenever we have a circle with two <coughs> intersecting tangents, Go from the center of the circle to where the tangents intersect. What does it do? And it creates two triangles that are the same. I'm just going to draw the top one here. I know this is 14 degrees. Do I know anything else about that triangle? Side here is the radius, very good, which would be point eight, half of my 1.6 diameter. There are two pieces of information now that I need. One is I'm going to need the length of this side. Second is I want to need this angle. Well, that angle is real easy to find. What's it have to be? Angles add up to 180. That's 76 degrees. How do I find that side? What trig function am I going to use? Tangent, very good. From this angle, the 14 degree angle, the point 0.8 is the opposite, this side is the adjacent. Tangent. 
tangent of theta equals the length opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. I know that the angle is 14 degrees. Opposite side is 0.8. My adjacent side is what I'm trying to find. How do I solve that? Take it a proportion and cross multiply and divide. So 1 times 0.8 is 0.8 divided by the tangent of 14. 0.209. Now we have everything we need. Go ahead and find our area. What piece do you want to find first? Triangle, okay? I'm leaving those both number one because they're going to be the same. How do I find the area of one of them? Times three point two zero nine, and of course, spread that by two. And of course, we're going to multiply by two because there's two of them. Two point five six seven. That's for both of those tribes. All that's left is our sector of the circle. How are we going to find that? Oh, well, we've got 76 here, right? 76 here. This angle minus 76 minus 76. What is that? 208 degrees. Pi times 0.8 squared. 208 over 36. So if I add those two numbers together, point seven two nine zero about. Why do we care? Well, these shapes, and technically it's more like the shape that we saw yesterday. We had a large circle with a smaller circle like that. This would actually be the shape of a cam on a camshaft. Spinning around this center, and that, that cam is there to activate whatever. It's a timing device. Well, if we're looking at the weight of that shaft, we would need a density. And weight, density, times volume. Or volume times density, however you want to put it. The first step, if you recall from last semester, the first step in finding a volume, find the area of a base. 
this shape would be considered the base of that portion of the cam. Find the volume then, be times a height or a length or whatever. That height would be this dimension here. If you want to get a, the weight of a camshaft, we would find this area, multiply by whatever that length was to get a volume, multiply that volume by a density. Now most camshafts have several different cams on them. Like that. So you, what you would have to do, let's just do this. Let's do a look at a shaft with two separate cams on it. Let's say that the diameter of our shaft here is one inch. And both of our cams are going to be identical. Let's say that the total length of this shaft here. 12 inches, five inches, and each cam like this. We're going to go center to center distance of the circles is one inch. Smaller cam has a diameter of 0.6 inches. Of course, it's not written, but of course, this large circle has a diameter of one inch. It's the same size as the shaft, right? The standard way we're going to divide it up is going to look just like that. Focus is going to be triangle. So the radius of the big circle is half of one, so it's 0.5 inches. The radius of the little circle is half of 0.6, so it's 0.3 inches. It means this side here this angle right here is going to be the inverse, not inverse tangent, but inverse Sine of eleven point five four degrees. Square root one squared minus point two squared. Nine point nine seven nine eight. So 
So the area here, I'm going to have the rectangle, I'm going to have two of them. I have the triangle, I'm going to have two of those, and then I have the two vectors of the circles. Area one is going to be the point nine seven nine eight times point three, and then of course times two because there's two of them. That's point five eight seven nine. Piece two is that triangle, which will be 0.98798, times 0.2 divided by two because it's a triangle, then times two because there's two of them. That's 0.1960. Point 0.3 will be pi times 0.5 squared will be the area of the whole circle times whatever this angle is here over 360. So, cool. This is 11.54. This one is going to be 78.46. So this is 360 minus 78.46 twice. Here's 203.08. Pi 0.5 squared, 203.08. Four four two eight. There is only one of those, so we don't multiply that one by two. And point the piece four is pi times the radius of that circle is point three squared. So that'd be the area of the whole circle. Then we have to multiply by that angle over three sixty. That angle is going to be three. Uh, 360 minus 90 minus another 90, so that's 180 minus the 11.54 twice. So 56.92. Again, that was 180 here instead of 360 because we had to subtract the 290 degree angle. I times point three squared. At one, two, three, two. And I'll add those all up. Okay, 1.3599 inches squared. That is the area of that camp piece. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to cut out those two pieces that have the cams in it, since they're the same size. It's 1.5 inches and 1.5 inches is going to make it a total of three inches. Volume of that is going to be that area 1.3599 inches squared times that distance of 
three inches. So it's 4.0797. That's the volume of the cams. I still need the volume of the rest of the shaft. So the area of just this circle here, pi times 0.5 squared. So half of the one inch gives me a radius of 0.5. 0.5, 0 0.785. How long is that? Well, I have this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here. I don't know how long each piece is, but I know the total has to be 12 inches. I've taken out 3 inches for the cams, which means I'm left with inches. Seventy five times nine is seven point oh six five. You're giving me a volume, a total volume of eleven point one four four seven cubic inches. So now if I know my density of that metal, I can multiply by the density and I would have this. That makes sense. It's a very common strategy when you have pieces like this. Cut pieces out, like the cams, put them back together if they're the same shape. Well, the worksheet that's posted in Blackboard is a little bit easier than these. Actually, the worksheet in Blackboard is very similar to the problems from yesterday, just with different numbers. the time we get started working on 